In this video you will learn what the term electrical conductivity means and how it depends on the number of free charges in a conductor, let's say a copper wire, and also on the mobility of electrons within this wire. And we will also see how the strength of the electric current is affected by all this. And you will learn in this video that conductivity is independent of the actual shape of the conductor. My name is Andreas from The Fearless Engineer and here we go. So let's start with the definition of the term conductivity. If you look it up on Wikipedia, it says there that the electrical conductivity represents a materials, such as copper for example, a materials ability to conduct electric current. And in order to dive more deeply into this definition, uh, let's start with a short review of things we already know. We have seen in previous videos that a voltage source, which might be for example a battery, that this source generates an electric field and uh, by, by using this field or through this field, um, kinetic energy is transferred onto charges. Those become moving charges which move into the direction um, of the field or if it's negative charges they move against the field and these charge carriers when they move they generate a current flow. This is what we perceive as electric current. Moving charges with a constant uh, velocity in a certain direction which is driven by the electric field. And the size of the current depends on the voltage of the voltage source, the material of the conductor and also the geometry of the conductor. And by using these facts we can look into the concept of conductivity in the upcoming slides. Now in the module on voltage we have already seen that the electric current depends on certain parameters which are the conductor geometry, the conductor material and also the electric voltage which we apply to the poles or the terminals of the respective conductor. And we also came up with this formula here. If you do not know where this formula comes from, I recommend that you watch the associated videos where we talk about the electric current in order to understand um, how we can arrive at this, at this definition of the electric current. But just to recap what you can see here, we have the electric current on the left side, we have the voltage of the battery on the right side and in front of the battery uh, we have those um, two clusters of parameters. The first uh, is associated to the geometry of the conductor which is represented by its surface area, the, um, um, the diameter of the cable you can see here on the right and also the length of this, of this uh, body here. And we have the electrons moving through the conductor driven by the electric field over the length L and um, the energy which is transferred to them is, um, is taken from the electric field generated by this battery here. And in the green box we have the material dependent parameters which are the number of electron in a cubic centimeter of the respective material, for example copper, and also this, uh, this parameter here is the electron mobility. And to be more precise maybe, uh, this parameter here is not the number of electrons but it's the number of free electrons which are free to move under the influence of the electric field. We have already talked about valence electrons when we discussed the structure of atoms and these are only the free moving electrons. It can easily be understood that uh, the more charges we have which are moving through a cable let's say the higher the larger the current which is moving through this cable so if we succeed in increasing the amount of free electrons in the conductor and also maybe increase the electron mobility we will be able to increase the amount of current flowing through this conductor. The greater will be the electric current. And here you can see two um, models of, uh, of metallic atoms. This is a copper atom with 29 protons in the core and an equal number of electrons um, on the various orbits surrounding the core. And the outermost one here in the red circle is called the valence electron, which I already talked about a few minutes ago. And this one is free to move as soon as the copper electrons of the wire arrange themselves in a lattice structure and this uh, very um, very dense structure frees up the outermost electrons, the valence electrons. And when we have an aluminum cable for example, this is an aluminum atom, it has 13 um, protons in the core and three valence electrons on the outermost shell, then per aluminum atom we have uh, num the number three um, valence electrons which, which are added um, to the number of free moving charges in this, in this um, aluminum cable. Now the electron mobility is defined as the amount of drift velocity in an electric field 
uh, with strength one. So we have already talked about drift velocity. If you do not know what this term means, I want to refer you to the respective video. And um, if we observe the drift velocity under the influence of a certain electric field, you will note that there is a relationship, um, when you recall this uh, video, between the strength of the field and also the electron mobility. And now we will rearrange this equation, which you can see here on the bottom left. Uh, usually uh, what we have seen before is drift velocity Vd equals electron mobility, on, which is now on the left side, times the uh, electric field strength. And this electron mobility, mobility here is defined um, as the drift velocity in a certain material under a very controlled electric field of strength 1. So we set this field here to 1, observe the drift velocity um, or record the drift velocity of the electrons moving through the conductor and this then is the electron mobility. And the unit of the electron mobility is square meters per volt second. And here you can see where this expression comes from. So meters per second, this is clearly the drift velocity, and volts per meter, this is the unit of the electric field, which is now inverse because it's in the denominator. And um, in, in summary, we get square meters um, divided by voltage seconds. That's the unit of the electron mobility. And from the units here, it becomes clear that this is uh, the definition behind electron mobility. Now let's look at a formal definition of electric conductivity. The electric conductivity gets uh, the letter sigma and sigma is defined by the material properties, the elementary charge, the charge carrier density and the charge carrier mobility. And all the material parameters which I just mentioned are um, depicted here inside this, this red box. We have already discussed this equation before. Now we are focusing only on the material dependent parameters. And this product of these three parameters is what we term conductivity sigma. And conductivity measures the ability of a material to transport a certain number of charges, free charges, um, through a conductor under the influence of, a, of an applied voltage. And it's it's given in this unit here, um, amps per volt meter. And in order to understand where this unit comes from, uh, you, only need to, you only need to look at the units behind these three parameters here, and um, then you will arrive at this, at this definition here. Let's look at two examples. The um, conductivity of copper is 58 times 10 to the 6 amps per voltmeter, and zinc is only 37 times 10 to the 6 amps per voltmeter. So from, from these two numbers, you can see that copper is a much better conductor than zinc for example. Now the major aim of this video was to build a bridge between these two, um, these two units here, current on the left side and voltage on the right side, and in the long run we want to get to um, Ohm's law, which, which um, introduces the concept of resistance in order to relate the two, um, current and voltage. And on our way, on our way there to this, to this concept of resistance, uh, we now introduce the concept of conductivity, which summarizes um, some of the uh, parameters from this rather lengthy equation to make it easier to, uh, to see um, the, the glimpse, the resistance, which already is um, hidden in this, in this conglomerate of parameters. It's um, defined by the conductivity, it's defined by the uh, cross-section area of the conductor we are looking at, and also by the length of the conductor. So from here, given, from, given this equation, you can already glimpse Ohm's law, which we are going to derive in the next few videos. That's all for now. If you have any questions related to this video, don't hesitate to drop me a comment down below in the comment section. Also, if you have any suggestions for future videos which you want me to make, please also leave a comment here. I wish you a nice day now, all the best, and see you next time here on The Fearless Engineer.